let's finish up our discussion of the ARM instruction set. Here's an example of some assembly code for um, a C assignment statement. Here's the assignment statement here. X gets A plus B minus C. Here's the first part of the assembler code where we uh, first get the address for A, then load the value of A, get the address for B, load the value of B, compute A plus B, then do the same thing for C. Here's the subtraction, and now we get the address for X so that we can store its value. Here's a, uh, another assignment with a multiplication, similar operations. We have to compute the address, load the value, uh, and then do our work. So this is the setup for the addition here, for example. And here's the multiplication, and here we store the result into Y. Here is another assignment where we show off some of the different um, operations. Uh, for instance, here is the OR operation, here's the AND operation. And once again, here's the store. Um, so there are several other addressing modes that you may find useful. For instance, there's a base plus offset addressing mode. Uh, so this would add the cons uh, offset 16 to the contents of register R1 and use that as an address. Um, there's also an auto indexing. So this uh, exclamation point here would uh, increment the base register. Uh, and then there's a post-indexing uh, fetch. Um, so it fetches first and then does the offset. Now one interesting aspect of the uh, ARM instruction set is that all operations can be performed conditionally. So they'll test the um, um, status bits in the uh, status register and uh, if the condition is satisfied, then they will um, execute the instruction. If the conditions are not satisfied by the status bits, it won't execute. So, for example, EQ says, is the result equal? Um, so the status bits have to say that the, that the result is equal, not equal here, less than, greater than, and so forth. So now we have a branch operation that allows us to uh, perform a jump. This is an unconditional branch. But all we have to do is append these flow of control conditionals to the branch, and now we have conditional branches. Okay. So the same mechanism that can be used to make, um, for instance, an add operation conditional is also used to make a branch conditional. Okay. Here's an if statement, for example. So first we need to compute the test condition. We want to test uh, A greater than B. We do that here. Here's the comparison right here. We're comparing these two registers. Um, if the comparison is false, uh, then we're going to branch to the block that uh, covers the um, else part of the condition. Right? If uh, the condition held, then we fall through that uh, conditional branch. We perform the um, uh, true part of the if. And at the end of that, we use a branch to avoid executing the else block. The else block is here. This is what's executed when the uh, statement is false. And so uh, both the true and the false block end up at this label. Okay. Here's the true block once again. Uh, so if we look at a switch statement in C, we have a value uh, that can uh, go to several different cases, for example, case 0, case 1. Right, so we can implement that um, by um, loading in the value, uh, loading the address for a table, and then we can um, use our addressing modes in order to um, compute the address inside this switch table uh, that we want to jump to. Here's an example of a loop, and this is a FIR filter, which is an example we'll see quite a few times. So we need to set up the loop first. We need to initialize the, the I, which is the uh, index for the loop, and F, which is the result. And so we're going to uh, set those up here. Um, we're also going to fetch the value for N. Um, the loop body is right here. Uh, we can fetch the two array uh, 
elements. We're going to multiply them together, then add them into f as a running sum. Then we need to decide um, whether we're done with the loop. So we need to um, test the index and do a comparison to see whether we exit. Um, if we are not ready to exit, then this branch less than takes us back to the head of the loop. If we are ready to exit, then we exit. Now, subroutines are um, accessed using a branch and link instruction, or BL instruction. This copies the program counter, which is stored in R15, over to R14. So this is another register that's used for other purposes. To return from the subroutine, it's pretty simple. We just move the contents of R14 into R15. So remember, the first register in this list is the destination register. So now we've we've copied uh, R14 into R15. Uh, if we want to do nested subroutine calls, then we need to um, use a stack, which which we can do. So in summary, it's a load store architecture. Most of the instructions are risky. Uh, that is, they execute in a single cycle, although there are a few multi-cycle instructions that generally deal with several registers. And all instructions can be executed conditionally.